Okay, so we're coming to the end of our discussion on some of these more debatable gifts like healing, prophecy, and tongues. Oh, and by the way, this is nothing new, which is why out of all the gifts, Paul had to devote an entire lengthy chapter to tongues and prophecy in his letter to the Corinthian church. And so for today, I want to make two big points. And the first point is that these gifts are not like these standalone gifts, but rather there is this huge degree of overlap regarding how these gifts function and how the Spirit uses them working together for His purposes. For example, the Scriptures speak about the spiritual gifts of the words of wisdom and words of knowledge, where a words of wisdom is most likely, and I say most likely because there is no biblical explanation given, but where it is most likely a spiritual insight into a course of action or decisions that need to be made. And where a word of knowledge is when the Spirit reveals a detail or a fact or a truth about someone that you otherwise would never have known. And the point is this. Where does one start and the other end? And how is that similar or different to the gift of prophecy? And I believe they're all related because they're all revelatory in nature. They're all concerning the revealing work of the Holy Spirit. And now we can possibly see how this intersects with evangelism, for example, which can be its own spiritual gift. But let's say you're speaking to someone and the Lord reveals something about a major decision they're making or a major challenge that they're going through. Can you see how that would make this person way more receptive to hearing and receiving the gospel, right? Or think of how it relates to the gift of healing. I mean, a story I heard recently was about a guy who was traveling in an Uber and he wanted to share the gospel with the Uber driver. And so he asked the Lord for a word of knowledge. As he was praying about this, he felt like the Lord was revealing that this guy was struggling with some gout in his ankles. And so he mentioned it to this guy and this guy confirmed that that was exactly what he was experiencing. And this meant that not only could he now pray for his healing, but now this guy was way more receptive to hearing the gospel because God was using all of these gifts together for his purposes. And now I know this is maybe not familiar territory for many of you, but these revelatory gifts are often exactly what we need when it comes to dealing with the demonic. What is going on here? How did this person come to be in this situation? And in these moments, we need every bit of revelation that God can give us, right? Or think about how these gifts relate to teaching, preaching, or leadership. That as we study God's word and as God guides and leads in revelatory and spirit-led ways with regards to what to teach, when to teach it. Certain things the Lord may drop in our hearts in the middle of a teaching. I mean, as all of this works together, we're just talking about more and more of the kind of ministry that isn't primarily defined by what we do, but by what God is doing and how we depend on Him and the work of His Spirit. And so these gifts are meant to complement each other and work together and or they work together with different people who are gifted in different ways. And as they work together, it's just like different streams of God's gifts and God's grace coming together to become a, a greater work of His grace. And man, I, I believe that's exactly what ministry can be and what it's supposed to look like. And that's what we're hoping to see here in our local churches, right? Okay, so that's the first thought for this video. The second thought comes from Romans chapter 12, which is one of the passages that speaks about spiritual gifts. And so I want to read through it quickly and make a few brief comments. And so it says here, reading from verse 4, For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. And so here Paul again makes the point he's been driving home in 1 Corinthians, and that is that spiritual gifts are something we're all given. And there's this diversity of gifts that are given, but a unity of purpose. And I love how he says here how each member belongs to all the others. Meaning there's like this mutual responsibility that we have towards each other to recognize each other and recognize each other's giftings and to exercise our gifts for what Paul calls the common good. 
because every member needs what God wants to give through every member. So we belong to each other. Okay, reading on from verse 6. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. Again, these gifts are a working of God's grace, God's power in and through us, God's provision. But now let's get to the point where I want to land, reading on from verse 6. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. And if it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Now, just just quickly looking at these verses, while this isn't the full list of spiritual gifts, imagine everyone who had even just these gifts from these verses actually put them into practice. That those who did have the gift of prophecy regularly encouraged and comforted and strengthened using their gifts of grace. And we had people serving and gifted teachers teaching. And if we had superpower level encouragers doing a whole lot of encouraging, don't we need that, right? And we had generous people giving generously and diligent, empowered leaders leading and cheerful people rolling up their sleeves as they show God empowered mercy in the places that need it most. I mean, that picture on its own is such a beautiful, compelling picture of what the church can be right and that is the point that if you've been given the gift now do it now put it into practice one of the ways that paul says exactly that here is with regards to prophecy that we should do it according to our faith now what i'm about to say i think is equally true of all gifts and therefore true of all of us i heard one person say it this way that if you spell faith you spell it R-I-S-K. Meaning regardless of the gift, at some point it means stepping out in obedience with a sense that God is working. That God has put grace in me for others. And so at some point it is going to require sometimes smaller, sometimes larger steps into new things. Things I'm less familiar with. Things I'm maybe less comfortable with. But steps of obedience, steps of risk, steps of faith. Now, there is a huge difference between risk and recklessness, where recklessness is stepping way outside of or way beyond what God is calling me to do or where things are done in such a reckless way that people aren't encouraged and strengthened and built up, but they're hurt and damaged as a result of my reckless abandon in the name of faith or we're just stepping way outside the biblical wisdom that God gives us for putting these spiritual gifts into practice so i'm not encouraging recklessness unless i mean you're like you're a hundred percent certain it is god god and only god and he's calling you to build an ark or something similar but i am challenging us to steps of faith to risk to step outside our comfort zone for every single one of us because that is where we learn to trust god's power god's wisdom god's strength and not our own abilities And then absolutely, that is when we will see God's power, God's love, God's presence, God's supply, and God's grace flowing and doing what only God can do among us.